d2 d4 d7 d6 knight g1 f3 knight g8 f6 c2 c4 g7 g6 knight b1 c3 bishop f8 g7 e2 e4 castling king side bishop f1 e2 knight b8 a6 castling king side e7 e5 rook f1 e1 c7 c6 bishop e2 f1 e5 captures d4 knight f3 captures d4 knight f6 g4 h2 h3 queen d8 b6 h3 captures g4 queen b6 captures d4 queen d1 f3 queen d4 e5 g4 g5 queen e5 e7 queen f3 g3 knight a6 c5 bishop c1 f4 bishop g7 e5 rook a1 d1 f7 f6 g5 captures f6 rook f8 captures f6 bishop f4 takes on e5 queen e7 captures e5 b2 b4 black's weakest square is certainly the d6 square at the moment occupied by a pawn which in turn is a bit weak white's worst placed piece is the nc3 which obviously would like to be on e4 on top of this white is leading in development and would like to use this actively It was quite natural to play. Knight c5 d7. But white would then have a chance to play. Queen g3 e3. When after. a7 a5. b4 b5. Knight d7 c5. The position would be unclear. Queen e5 captures g3. Markovsky is doubling white's pawns and preparing to put his knight on e5. When you look at how the game went, this might seem foolhardy, but it was not at this point that the big mistake occurred. Still, I find it a bit risky. F2 takes on g3. Knight c5 d7. Naturally, if black were given an extra move to play 22, and e5, he would be on top of the world. With the queens gone, it would be no problem moving the king to e7 to defend the d6 pawn and white would have to spend half the game bringing his knight to a decent square. An example of this can be found should white play. c4 c5. When black manages to get all his pieces out with. Knight d7 e5.
c5 takes on d6. Bishop c8 g4. And then the rook to d8. White is clearly fighting for equality in that case, not having solved the problem with the nc3. Faced with this prospect, White has no choice but to sacrifice a pawn. E4 E5. The pawn is let go so that the knight will have a future. Knight d7 captures e5. Knight c3 e4. Would allow white to win the pawn back without giving up any of his advantages. d6 takes on e5. Knight c3 e4. If he tries to get his pieces out with something like Rook f6 f8 Knight e4 d6 Knight d7 f6 Then after Rook e1 captures e5 He has no real way to deal with the invasion on e7 The game is not lost but it is certainly unpleasant Rook f6 f7. Black has to play passively. c4 c5. Another benefit of the pawn sacrifice is that white has time to activate his bishop. White's advantage would be decisive if he could either win his pawn back or bring the queens back onto the board. But in this slightly simplified position he lacks targets to some degree. King g8 g7 Bishop f1 c4 Rook f7 e7 a2 a4 The crucial moment of the game and closely related to our topic. What should black focus on? Making something of his bishop and rook certainly. In his book Gelfand proposed that black should play b7 b6 when after rook d1 d6 b6 captures c5 b4 takes on c5 knight d7 f8 rook d6 takes on c6 bishop c8 b7 rook c6 d6 rook a8 c8 bishop c4 d5 Bishop b7 captures d5. Rook d6 captures d5. He quite clearly favors white in the endgame. This is undeniably better than what was played in the game. The correct move is a7 a5 which challenges the white pawns and makes something out of the RA8. The critical line goes. B4 B5. C6 captures B5. 
a4 captures b5 a5 a4 rook e1 f1 a4 a3 how should this position be evaluated i am honestly not certain white has a strong knight on e4 and bishop on c4 but as said before he lacks targets black on the other hand has managed to get a passed pawn and to activate the ri8 i have analyzed the active So I think white should follow my more human thinking and play. Bishop c4 a2. I find white's position more attractive, but that said, I am not really sure what I am intending to do with it. In a practical game this would no doubt be felt as pressure by the black player, but I am not sure if it is anything significant objectively. Bishop c4 d5. Where black ends up fine in the following complicated line. Knight d7 f8. Knight e4 d6. Knight f8 e6. c5 c6. Knight e6 d4. c6 takes on b7. Bishop c8 captures b7. Knight d6 captures b7. Knight d4 e2. King g1 h2. Knight e2 c3. Knight b7 c5. Rook a8 d8. Rook d1 d3. Knight c3 captures d5. Rook d3 takes on a3. e5 e4. A draw is the most likely outcome. Rook e7 e8. I am not sure what the idea is behind this move, but I am sure that Markovsky had won. Unfortunately there is a big downside to this move, White now finds a target to aim for with his active pieces. Rook e1 f1. Rook e8 e7. Rook d1 d2. Sealing the deal, White will invade on f7. Amusingly, it takes the computer quite a while to understand that it is all over. B7 B5 A4 captures B5 C6 captures B5 Bishop C4 D5 